My sister-in-law, who usually only thinks about herself, called me out of the blue. She said she left her baby in a bag at our doorstep and told me to take care of it for a week. I was shocked and confused. I had just moved out the day before. When I told her this, she started yelling at me, saying she was overseas and demanded I find the baby right away. I hurried back to the house I used to live in, driving as fast as I could. But when I got there, the baby was nowhere to be seen. Panicking, I realized I needed to call the police. As I reached for my phone, I suddenly remembered something terrifying. I had been married to Scott for 10 years, and we had always wanted children, but we were never able to have any. Now, at 38 years old, my younger sister-in-law, Lindsay, who was five years younger than me, often took advantage of me. Her husband was a big shot, and mine worked for him. She would constantly ask me to do things for her, even though they were just a short drive away. Since she got pregnant, she became even more demanding, making me do all sorts of chores, even though I loved helping people. I had tried to talk to my husband about her selfish behavior, but nothing ever changed. My husband asked me to continue helping Lindsay for a bit longer, promising to talk to her about her behavior. Reluctantly, I agreed, knowing he was influenced by her husband. So whenever Lindsay called, I went to her house, despite my reservations. One day, while at her place, she bossed me around, demanding the TV remote. I tried to suggest that moving around might be good for her, especially since she seemed to be showing more than expected for just three and a half months of pregnancy. But she brushed off my concern, saying I couldn't understand because I'd never been pregnant. She seemed to think this baby was everything. But her constant arrogance was starting to get to me. It stressed me out, and I struggled to keep my patience. When I questioned whether the baby's gender could be determined at three and a half months, Lindsay got really angry. She said nowadays you can find out the gender right away with advanced technology, making me feel outdated. I didn't want to argue, so I just listened to her complaints, feeling tired. She accused me of being jealous because I couldn't get pregnant and said it was my fault if anything happened to the baby. She even used the unborn baby to threaten me. Being around Lindsay became suffocating, but I had to bear with it because my husband asked me to. I felt uneasy about the situation, but my husband told me to hang in there a bit longer. I kept making excuses to avoid Lindsay's demands, but she complained to my husband, leaving me feeling helpless. Eventually, I had to give in to her constant calls. She threatened me, saying my brother's job at the company might suffer if I didn't comply, reminding me that her husband was the president. Reluctantly, I went to Lindsay's place whenever she called. Lindsay gave birth to a baby boy prematurely, weighing over 140 ounces. I thought he seemed too big for being born early, but I didn't question it. Lindsay named him Chris and immediately asked me to take care of him, saying it was good practice for when I had my own kids. Despite my annoyance with Lindsay, I couldn't resist the adorable baby. Taking care of Chris didn't feel like a burden at all. As time went on, Lindsay started leaving Chris at my house more often. One day, she dropped him off dressed up, saying she had a dinner related to her husband's work and needed to go with him. I realized then how busy a president's wife could be, so I diligently took care of Chris. But the frequency of Lindsay leaving Chris with me kept increasing. When I questioned if it was too much, she insisted that I should help because her husband was handling important business deals. Despite my doubts, I couldn't refuse to care for the baby. One day, while changing Chris's diaper, I noticed he had diarrhea. He didn't seem sick otherwise, so I made sure to keep him warm. When Lindsay came to pick him up, I told her about it. She accused me of harming Chris out of spite, but I denied it. Just then, my husband Scott arrived home and intervened. He explained that I might not have much experience with babies and it could have been because Chris got a little cold. He asked Lindsay to forgive me, and she left in tears. I was puzzled why I had to apologize when I hadn't done anything wrong. Feeling frustrated, I sent Lindsay and Chris off. Later, while preparing dinner, Scott pulled out some documents and said there was something important we needed to discuss. What he told me was unbelievable, 
and I couldn't have imagined it. However, seeing Scott's determined stance, I quietly agreed. A week later, while unpacking boxes, Lindsay called, saying she had left a bag at our entrance and that I should take care of Chris for a week. I was baffled, as we had moved out the day before. I pleaded with her to pick up Chris immediately, but she didn't believe me at first. Finally understanding, she panicked, revealing that she had left Chris in a bag on the doorknob five hours ago. Despite it being spring, it was still chilly outside. Worried about Chris's well-being, I rushed to our old house. However, there was no sign of him or the bag. After searching and asking neighbors with no luck, I was about to call the police when I received a shocking call. I was left speechless by its content. Lost in shock, I wandered around until Lindsay called again, asking if I found Chris in the bag at the entrance. But he wasn't there, and I couldn't find him anywhere. Lindsay panicked, fearing her husband would divorce her if Chris wasn't found, blaming me for everything. Desperate, Lindsay refused to involve the police, prioritizing her husband's reputation over Chris's safety. She even admitted that Chris was just a means to get money from her husband. I was stunned by her selfishness. Eventually, Lindsay lamented that her trip was ruined as she couldn't get a flight that day. It was clear that she cared more about her own inconvenience than the safety of her own child. But I'm coming back tomorrow. Don't tell my husband anything. If you find Chris, contact me immediately. I'll do what I can. Lindsay seemed satisfied with my response and hung up. The next day, as I waited for her at the airport, she arrived with a man, looking displeased. When I told her that Chris was unreachable, Lindsay panicked, accusing me of lying and demanding that I find a baby resembling him immediately. Enraged and devastated, she questioned if I was even a mother. Overwhelmed with anger and sadness, tears streamed down my face. But I composed myself and firmly told her to talk to a woman who had been hiding behind me, revealing herself as the wife of Lindsay's affair partner. The man trembled in shock as his wife confronted him, refusing to forgive him and giving him a hard slap. Passersby stopped to watch the dramatic scene unfold. Lindsay tried to explain that they weren't in that kind of relationship, but her attempt to deceive was cut short when I started recording the scene on my smartphone. Despite Lindsay's protests, I remained calm and showed her the evidence I had collected, including emails and photos of her with her affair partner. She tried to snatch them away, but I stood my ground. I had actually met her affair partner's wife by chance, as she worked at my regular hair salon. Lindsay was stunned, realizing how I had found out about her affair. She had no explanation for her actions, and I felt a mix of relief and satisfaction as I confronted her with the truth. Unlike his wife, who was successful and owned several shops and was skilled in a technique, her husband was known for not working and just playing around. He was a typical husband sponging off his wife. When I told his wife about Lindsay's affair trip, she said she had enough and decided to join me. Usually gentle and kind, I was surprised at how terrifying she could be when angry. The hairstylist, known as a playboy, couldn't stand up to his wife and begged repeatedly for her not to divorce him. Watching her resolute refusal, I felt a strong resolve. Moreover, I wondered if Chris was born for me to fare. When I mentioned this, his wife brushed it off, but I showed her documents proving Lindsay's husband wasn't Chris's biological father. Lindsay snatched the DNA test results and tore them up, thinking she could get away with it. But I wasn't going to let that happen. I revealed I was on a video call with Lindsay's husband, who had been monitoring her actions. Lindsay panicked, realizing she had been caught. I explained everything step by step. A week ago, her husband suspected something and requested a DNA test. Meanwhile, he'd lied about going on a business trip to monitor her actions. Lindsay, unaware of this, contacted her lover and booked an overseas trip in a rush. After placing Chris in a bag at the entrance of my old house, Lindsay skipped off to the station, humming a tune. Her husband followed her and took care of Chris. If he hadn't, who knows what could have happened. Surprised, 
Lindsay's husband had been the one I was about to call the police when I couldn't find Chris. Surprised but eager to fully understand the situation, I immediately went to Lindsay's husband's house. Chris was full of energy, playing with a rattle. As I recounted the events, I remember that despite being born a month early, he weighed over 140 ounces. I had reluctantly accepted it at the time, but now it seemed strange. With Lindsay's husband's permission, I searched through her belongings and found her maternal and child health handbook. Looking at its contents, I discovered that Lindsay had falsified the baby's weeks. It all started to make sense. Reflecting on the timing of her pregnancy, I realized it coincided with her husband's long business trip, making it impossible for him to be the father. Lindsay must have known this and tried to deceive everyone by fudging the birth month, especially since Chris turned out to be unexpectedly large. Her lover, now exposed, began apologizing profusely to his wife, who coldly handed him divorce papers. Meanwhile, Lindsay's husband confronted her, accusing her of being with him just for the money. Caught in the truth, Lindsay choked up, denying her earlier statement. Her husband had recorded our conversation to prevent her from denying it later. Lindsay seemed to tremble slightly. But then she attempted to justify herself, claiming that Chris was still her child because she gave birth to him, regardless of blood relation. Both her husband and I were appalled by her selfish justification. Lindsay's husband abruptly ended the call, leaving Lindsay in shock. She tried to call him back, but it was clear that he had had enough. Feeling a mix of frustration and disappointment, I confronted Lindsay. Despite everything I had done for her, she showed no remorse, only caring about salvaging her own situation. As Lindsay collapsed on the spot, realizing the severity of her actions, I couldn't help but feel a chill. Despite her brother being her last ally, she screamed in disbelief when she realized he had abandoned her. I firmly declared my separation from my hopelessly awful sister-in-law, knowing that Chris deserved better. Later. I reported Lindsay's abandonment of the baby to the police. Although she was quickly protected, the act was deemed too cruel, and she was severely reprimanded. Lindsay ended up divorced and disowned by her family, utterly alone. She was sued for child abandonment and tricking her child's father, demanding $30,000 in damages. Forced to borrow money, she ended up working in a shady place to repay the debt. Meanwhile, I resolved to raise Chris as my own child. When I shared this with my husband, he happily agreed. And to top it off, I revealed that I was also expecting a new life. We promised to raise these children with care, ensuring they could live freely and happily.